So you want to be able to create an X versus Y scatter graph in Microsoft Excel. Now creating the scatter graph is actually really easy, but you may encounter some difficulties depending on how the data is laid out in your worksheet. So we're going to look at different layouts of this data, the data that you can see here currently, and see how to overcome some of those difficulties. Now, the first thing to think about it is what to select before you try to create a graph. Now here, we only want to plot temperature and sales. We're looking at the relationship between these two columns of data. The temperature data is the highest temperature on a particular day. And then the sales column shows us how many ice creams have been sold on that day. So we're looking to see if there's a relationship between these two columns of data. Now, although we've recorded the particular day that this data relates to, we don't actually need that date column in our chart. Now, if that date column didn't exist, all you'd need to do is click into one cell within your data. But because we have that extra column, we're going to need to tell Excel which columns to include in our chart. So to do that, you'd need to start by selecting the column headings at the top of your columns, and then use the shortcut key, Control Shift Down Arrow key to select down to the last consecutive row of data. Alternatively, you could manually select the data, but I think you'll find that little shortcut key, Control Shift Down Arrow key, is a really useful technique. Anyway, once you've selected the data, you go to the Insert tab on your ribbon, and in the Charts group, you'll see a little Scatter Graph button here. If you click on that, and I'm just going to go for this first Scatter Graph option here, and it has created the Scatter Graph for me. Now, one thing to notice is, is that the first column in your data is used for the x-axis, or the horizontal axis. So for us, that's the temperature, and the second column is used for the y-axis. Now, if you wanted the x and the y-axis to be the other way around, then there are two options. Either you can change the order of the columns in your data, and I'll show you a really easy way of doing that in a minute, or you can actually manipulate which columns are used for x and y within your chart. So let's look at that method first of all. So you start by selecting a chart, and you should see the Chart Design tab on your ribbon, and you click on Select Data. Alternatively, you can right-click in an empty space in your chart, say up here by the chart title, and then click on Select Data in this shortcut menu. And then you want to click on this Edit button, and you can see here which cells are being used for the X values, it's column B, and which cells are being used for the Y values, that's column C. Now, if I want this the other way around, all I need to do is click on this little button here for the X values, and then you can see the cells that have been currently used. You've got the marching ants around them, and you would select instead the other column. So I click into C2, Control Shift down arrow key. Then I click on this little button, and you can see now series X values pointing to column C. So I need to change the series Y values so that they point at column B. So I click on this little button here, select the first value in column B, Control Shift down arrow key, click back on this little arrow button, click on OK, click on OK again, and you can see now it's reversed the axes. I've got temperature down the side on my Y axis, and sales across the bottom on my X axis. Now if you prefer, you can switch the X and Y Access by changing the order of the columns in your data. So if I go to this sheet, what I'm going to do before I create the chart is change the order of the columns. So I select one of the columns at the top there, just clicking on the letter, hold down shift on my keyboard, with my mouse point at the edge of the selection, hold down my left mouse button, drag to where I want to position the column. You can see that green vertical line there let go of my mouse, let go of shift. So now the columns are in the correct order. I select the column headings, control shift down arrow key, go to the insert on my ribbon, and then click on the scatter graph button. And there you are, you have temperature down the side and number of sales across the bottom. So another scenario is where the columns that you want to plot on the scatter graph are not contiguous. 
you've either got a column of data between them or you've got a blank column. So how do we deal with that? The first step is to select the two non-contiguous columns. So I click in the header for the first column, control shift down arrow key. Then I can use control backspace to get back to the top of that column. Then I hold down control and select the column heading for the second column and then control shift down arrow key again. And that selects the second column. You could also select manually and to do that, you would select the first column, just drag down over it, scroll back up, hold down control and select the second column. Scroll back up. So then you'd go to insert, click on your scatter graph button, and you can see that it uses both of those columns in your scatter graph. Now, in terms of improving the chart that I've created here, I might, for example, want to change the minimum value on the horizontal axis. Now to do that, I can just double click on one of those numbers on the horizontal axis, and that should bring up the format axis task pane on the right of your screen. And then under axis options, I'm gonna change the minimum value to 15. The other thing that's quite nice to do in a scatter graph is to show a trend line. And you can do that by clicking on this plus button here or your chart elements button, and then clicking on trend line, and that'll draw a trend line through your data points. If you want to change the color of that trend line, just click on it, so it's selected. Then over here on format trend line, click on this fill a line button, and then you can change the color here. I might change mine to orange. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.